Hey, everybody, it's the Dynamite Show with Paul Fontaine and Jeff Hawkins. <laughs> so I was trying to get this up, and I just, I don't know, for some reason my fingers weren't working properly. So here's our here's yeah. our opening. Yeah, mashed potatoes on your fingers. That's that, the problem. <laughs> that too, yeah. I was eating before we went on the air. Um, and I'm looking at these mashed potatoes right now, but they're good cold. Um, so, yeah, I want to thank you all for supporting the Fight Game Media Patreon Plus. Um, and, uh, and if you haven't already, please, uh, seek out our free feed and subscribe to that as well, because it really helps us out all the downloads, make a difference and leave us a five-star review and all that good stuff. So Jeff, uh, we had a marathon, uh, session after all out. Um, I, I don't know if we can do that again. Uh, no. <laughs> we might just have to do our own or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. i not, I mean, I love talking to Mel and Sam, but, uh, uh, five was maybe, too too many uh, <laughs> and uh yeah but uh it was good chat um yeah. apparently they stayed on the air for half an hour after we hung up oh really not not on the air but talking off air okay yeah but uh so as we were recording the all out post show we'd heard about the um we'd heard about the the punk comments obviously and we talked a lot about that but what we i don't think we'd heard about yet was the fight backstage right yeah and the melee the uh the fracas the kerfuffle the ruckus the ruckus Someone hey there's the a, ruckus there's there a good go. word there's a good word the um there's a word with a t like uh the tie up maybe i don't know anyway pier six brawl pier six brawl yeah there you go uh cat fight uh cat the fight. closing scene of our, <laughs> cat fight's probably the closest we're gonna get the, to the, it the, I, i'd say the anchorman fight scene it, it sounds a lot like <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the, you know, depending on who you believe, I mean, I'll do a mashup of both. Uh, the box went in to talk to punk punk. Didn't really want to talk or maybe it was the other way around. No punk went into the Bucks room, right? That, that much is, is no, every, the Bucks the Bucks, the Bucks went to punks, right? Directly. Cause the bunks are locker room leaders and they figured they'd go and try to settle punk down and uh, punk didn't want to be settled down. And, uh, he sicked his, his dog on on no no it wasn't his dog it was his best friend he sicked a steel on kenny omega uh kenny omega got bit um chairs were thrown punches were thrown legal threats were made and uh and the net result is um the there's no aw world champion right now we have a new trios champions that were crowned on dynamite tonight and uh all parties involved including a bunch of backstage officials are gone for the time being and maybe longer um i fightful are, are they reporting now 30 days for everybody or uh, i don't uh 30 days for everybody except punk and ace right now so punk and ace might be gone maybe okay there was no mention of any of these people uh there were indirect it, it, it's it's pending the investigation by right. the third party right so so there were no mention of any of them on the show. There were there were a couple of kind of mentions of Punk, but without saying his name, just you know referencing what happened on Sunday. Um, but they, you know, like I mean, it was it was really funny because Mox was talking about losing the title, but couldn't talk about who pinned him. Uh, MJF. They showed highlights of MJF challenging for the belt, but couldn't show who he was challenging. Um, and uh, and then the. The, the Bucks were stripped of the tag team titles due to injury, but they couldn't, like, who's injured? <laughs> you know, like, Hangman's in the tournament. Um, and and the Dark Order, no, the Dark Order was not allowed to compete in the trio for the trio's title because of injury. Right. We've got Silver, Reynolds, and Page. Why couldn't Page compete? Well, I guess because he's in the world title tournament. But Correct. And, and Uno. Oh, Reynolds and, is and hurt too, right? Is and Reynolds hurt too? Reynolds is Reynolds hurt too? So yeah. it's just silver. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a mess. Um, <laughs> That's an understatement, but yes. Yeah. I mean, um, what do you make of this? <laughs> There's a loaded uh, question. My overall, and it's been formed as today has gone on actually because of all the discourse and everything on, on Twitter, which is of course a great place to form solid thoughts is that this is all Tony Khan's fault. Tony Khan, had he been uh, done his job really nips this in the bud at every available moment he can. 
and this doesn't happen for the most part. If he if he goes to Page and says, "Hey, you're out of line. We need an apology." And apparently there was a sit down between Punk and Page and, and Tony Khan after the after the Page thing, and nobody really. Was, uh, that's what uh, DJ Convoy told me. Um, wow. Well, that's new to me. And I and I, I I I believe that it probably could have happened. Okay. Yeah. Fine. But Punk obviously wasn't happy with the solution. So Punk goes out there and does his thing. Tony Khan needs to step in then too. And if it's not getting resolved then, and it's not serious enough to be resolved, then he needs to cut him off at this. He needs to control that scrum a little harder. Mm -hmm. Not get into, and this is not Nick House. He was right next to him. As yes. he's burying the, the EVPs and Hangman and... And Hangman, but it starts with the Colt Cabana stuff. Yeah. And, and and it wasn't brought up by Punk. Well, it was brought up by Punk. It was, but... Yeah, it was, it was Punk just it was came because, up with the Colt Cabana stuff on his well, own. Well, no, not necessarily on his own. It was because of the person who was asking the first question or he was talking to at first, which who was Nick Houseman of Wrestling Inc., who is an improviser in Chicago. Right. And, and Nick Houseman either was being cute or doesn't know enough history, which surprises me as he is a managing editor at wrestling, Inc., which kind of set me off a little bit, but nevertheless, punk is apparently aware that Nick Houseman does improv in Chicago. Right. And he asked him, so are you still doing improv there? Or who are you doing? Who have you done improv with lately or whatever like that? And Nick Houseman answered, I did, I did improv with Scott Colton. Oh, okay. So, but Punk asked the question. Yeah, Punk. A Punk asked, "Who are you still doing improv so with?" Punk Nick asked Houseman. the question, knowing what the answer is going to be. No, because he no. wanted to talk about Colton. I, oh. I don't. I don't think oh, okay, he knew okay. that Colton was going to be brought up. Oh, okay, okay. Houseman okay. brought up Colton, and that set oh, Punk off. But why would he ask that question? What does that have to do with all out? I don't know. <laughs> that's what i mean so i think it, it was, it was just know. one of those friendly chats between two oh. guys from chicago it's like gotcha. hey you still doing improv oh, okay. yeah who, who have you done it with oh i used to do it with scott colton oh, okay gotcha 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 okay and that sets punk off yeah yeah and then he's punk like, being aware of somebody's improv career pisses me off personally because <laughs> i don't think many wrestlers know about mine and I, you know, I've done some things, uh, but nevertheless, yeah. So that sets punk off and then punk starts getting the, into his flow yeah. and then he starts, uh, and then his rage turns to other things he's angry about. Oh and yeah. That's he's how we he's, get he's on going there. off on Brian Alvarez and, yes. um, you know, and, and the bucks Kenny, I think, and, uh, and here, hangman, you have a theory. Yeah. So my theory is, so, rewind a little bit before this to the ending of all out punk has just won the world title in his hometown. He's standing victorious. All of a sudden MJF appears. The fans start chanting for MJF. His music plays. They go nuts. He comes out. He challenges for the belt. The fans are cheering for MJF and CM Punk's hometown. CM Punk's a smart guy. Uh, and he knows that he's about to be turned heel, whether he wants to or not. So I think he started to lean into that on this press conference and he started saying things to push buttons like he does. He knows the people like the Bucks. He knows the people like Hangman. So he's going to he's going to go off on them. They, he knows they like Colt. So he's going to go off on them and he's going to say things to piss them off. But he hasn't cleared any of this with Tony. He hasn't cleared any of this with the Bucks, obviously, with Hangman. And uh, and not only that, way, that's something that Tony can put right down yes. right now. Everybody yeah. needs to. If you're going to say something about another guy, make sure yeah. it's cool with him or you're yeah. fined or yeah. yeah, or you're cut off. You know, like he could have cut when you talked about him stepping in, he could have cut his mic off. He yeah. could have called to the back and said, send hangman out there now. Like, yeah. cause that's your top one of your top baby faces. And he just got directly challenged and yeah. you know, like, but I mean, it wasn't in the script. So but back I mean, to I'm, your theory. Yeah. So my theory is that he, you know, he does this and the Bucks obviously aren't clued in. So they're like pissed off and they're like, Hey, like what's going on? They go to challenge him and punks like, Oh, grow up. You know, I'm just doing a, a promo, you know? And then, and then it's like, well, you know, you know, and, and all this. And then they just, it got out of hand. Cause I'm sure a lot of this stuff he actually feels. So he's using what he actually feels to build 
what he thinks is going to be a nice angle down the road. Maybe he thinks him and FTR can work with the Bucks for the trios titles. Maybe he thinks him and Hangman have, you know, another match coming down the road or something. And it got out of hand. So I'm not saying that Tony set this up as a work. I don't think he's smart enough to do that. Um, and uh, and not only that, I mean, it, it blew up in his face if he did. Yeah. And yeah. And uh, and obviously the Bucks aren't working. And Kenny, like, you know, they just want to wrestle. They just want to wrestle and play video games. I mean, that's that's all they want to do. Um, so yeah, that's my theory, but I, you know what? I mean, I've been pretty bullish I, on this and I'm, I'm totally fine with just thinking punk is a complete asshole that doesn't know how to work with people. And, uh, and he, it blew up in their face. Okay. I'm going to give you a theory and then I'm going to okay. give you what I think. Okay. Because I liked this theory a lot. Also punk probably has to have tricep surgery because mm -hmm. he hurt himself pretty bad in the, in the match from what's being told. He knows he's not going to be back for a while, and he might not ever be back with this second injury. Leave it all out on the table. <laughs> Just, I have grievances. It's the airing of grievances. It's Festivus for Punk. He's just going to air what he thinks and and let the, let the chips fall where they may because he's not coming back for a while. And by the time he comes back, everything's cooled down. Now, here's what I think. Actually think. I think Punk shares, unfortunately, there's a little bit of familiarity with Punk. You've been in artistic endeavors before, Paul, correct? Yes. You've been in places where there might be, oh, say, like, I'll, I'll give you an example. In improv theaters, there's a lot of clicks. And there's a lot of clicks with power. And everything's hunky-dory, but there's that guy. And he's a jerk. And even worse, he's a jerk who's correct. And that's CM Punk's problem, is that his points are valid. But nobody wants to hear them. But he's going to say them anyways. Um, you know, he's a guy at this point who wants to make money and drive commerce and make this company successful. Five-star matches, I don't think, are his thing. I don't think he wants to just have fun with the boys, make videos backstage and play video games. I think his we're not in receipt a type of comment was valid in many ways about what used to be called all friends wrestling. Mm -hmm. We people used to make fun of that all the time. And you know, and the Bucks and Omega, yeah, hey, give jobs to our friends, let's make some money, let's have some great matches, etc. Punk is a guy who wants to drive business and grow the company. And they're both correct, but they're both also wrong in how yeah. they handled this. Mm -hmm. They did not handle it like men. They handled it like... <laughs> Punk says, I work with children. Well, Punk also was is just an older child <laughs> <laughs> in, in this whole scenario. Because, yes, gossiping, leaking saying things when they're not supposed to wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Let's see what the reaction is going to be. Everybody's kind of trolling each other right now. Think thinking it's all fun and games. And then punches were thrown and now it's not fun and games anymore. And no. everybody's wrong in this. Now everybody's playing, wrong. Now you're playing with the big boys. Yes. Um, the, uh, I, as you were describing your theory or, or what you think it is, I was thinking about, uh, I mean, I'm, kind of currently involved in a situation uh, you know like in an endeavor like you said a creative endeavor let's say and um and i think you know about it and i'm trying to figure out if i'm punk or the bucks in this <laughs> but i'm definitely one of them um and uh hopefully it ends better uh we can talk off air if you don't know what i'm talking about i i, I think i do but you'll tell me off air and i'll all I'll right there. but but i was the guy in, in like my second city sketch group i'll give you the example I was not the Bucks here in Omega. They said, okay, you guys need to all get together and write this show together and do that. And it's going to be a collaborative process, et cetera, et cetera. We come into level five. We had already been through four levels together where we're writing the show. Three people come in and go, oh, we wrote the show. Oh. And, you know, the people who don't write in the group were fine with that because they were also all written parts. My parts were basically, hey, look, it's, you know, it was always man number one introducing some wacky character that somebody else got to play. And then I got to be out here. 
Oh, and yeah. I lost. I kind of lost it on on them. I'm like, look, this. And the director agreed with me, but I was still the jerk who went about it the wrong way. I was the jerk with the point, and I didn't win any friends on that day. And I probably lost about millions of dollars in future co- comedy revenue because there there were some people in my Second City review who went on to have great jobs in show business. Oh, and I burned that bridge hard <laughs> because I made it public. And I was like, look, you said we were all going to write this together. I'm like, well, Jeff, we'll include some of your sketches, blah, blah, blah. I go, that's not the point. The yeah. point was we were supposed to do this together, et cetera. It was not my finest moment. And people afterwards said, yeah, you're correct, but you should have handled it better. You know, and yeah, you hear that, yeah. and you're like, how am I supposed to handle this to get it across to these people that what mm-hmm. they did was also wrong? So it's yeah. one of those things where we have two wrongs, and it ain't gonna make a right. No, and I mean and, and that's the key. That's the key to all this. But there, but also the director could have stepped in at any point yes. there and said, "Hey, let's fix this." And he didn't. And the director should have done what Tony Khan should have done here, and and been stepping in early and often to get this thing right. And instead, Tony, I, I rewatched that scrum and just watching his eyes like darting and stuff as if he didn't know what to do. And I understand the shock of it. I'm a little bit sentimental to that because I've also been a manager and I've been a manager with personality clashes and I've had to deal with that. And you don't want to step into it because it's like, well, they're, they're grown adults. They'll figure it out. No, this is why they pay you the big bucks. You need to step in and you need to handle the situation. You need to get the proverbial metaphorical, whatever you want to call it, pimp hand out and start (laughs) and get control of your employees. And he didn't. And yeah. watching him in that scrum, I was getting angry watching him because it's obvious he's uncomfortable, but he's pulling this whole we need to be transparent thing. And you don't need to be transparent for those wrestling journalists in the crowd. I'm sorry. No. If they're all pl- the best point I read was at like a two year old point on Twitter or something like that. Maybe it was more months than that. All of the wrestling journalists in there are playing a role in this too. Mm-hmm. They're playing a part, they're acting, they're well, part that- of the story. And well, that, that's why so many people thought this was a work because he's convincing all these people to come there. And the first thing you see is CM Punk going off. Like, yes. so naturally you're going to think it's a work, you know, he was yeah. begging Brian and Dave to come to the thing. Cause, and they're the biggest guys out there. So, you know, Oh yeah, you got a show. You got to come in. I mean, now Brian, Brian, and Dave explained it. No, it wasn't really like that, but that's the no. story. That's the story that's out there. So, and you know what? I think the fans recognize what you're saying about Tony and that he could have stopped it. And the reaction to him in the opening, which we'll get to in a minute, I think says that, you know, that they recognize who's at fault here. And, uh, you know, I don't know if they do. Well, they booed I mean, him. The, major- the majority. Yes. Yeah. Well, they booed Tony. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I didn't hear that on. Screen oh, no. When he was on screen and start talking, it was pretty loud booze. Well, that was awkward to begin with, but we'll get to that when we get to that promo. But at the same time, it was like a lot of the, I mean, I mean, I'm looking at Twitter, so that's a bubble in its own right. And a lot of them have taken a side. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't think the, yeah, not a lot of people on Twitter or even our fight game group. A few people have said, you know, TK is the one at fault here. Uh, Maybe, you know, if you're talking about, you know, levels of blame, I mean, TK, maybe punk next, maybe the bucks next, maybe page under there page has a little bit of it but i mean honestly page did the same thing that eddie kingston did that john moxley did that cm punk was doing and how is he supposed to know that it wasn't okay yeah there are four or five moments to step in here yeah Yeah. and continually escalate punishment to, to prevent the actual fight from happening or again like you said set parameters before they even get get out there you're giving a guy a live mic say hey here's what you can do here's what you can't do Yes. And, uh, you know, Moxie might look at him and say, fuck off. I know what to do. But, um, you know, like the hangman is be OK, thanks, boss. You know, and, and go out there, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that's it. So um, and, all right. and le- unless it's a Ridley Scott situation, Ridley Scott, an alien famously didn't tell anybody that he was going to pop, pop the alien out of John Hurt when when doing this scene. And it made a lot of people angry on set. They didn't tell 
then you bribe them. Then you say, oh. <laughs> here's money and gifts and stuff. Yeah. Make it all right. You know, okay. Yeah, that guy said something personal because I wanted your real reaction on screen because you're not giving it to me good enough when you're trying to act. So I had him say something to you that you yeah. weren't expecting. But, you, but hey, here's here's $2,000. Go yeah. buy your wife something. That's what you, you grab do. them like literally on the way to the back and say, hey, yes. don't go talk to him. I let him do it. Yes, you, know? yeah, you take yeah. the fall. And that's what he could have done with the whole cult situation too is, yep. is stop the scrum right there and go hey yeah my my call i don't discuss personal des- yeah. personnel decisions live with the media if you have a question come to me later but that was my call that wasn't because of punk that wasn't because of this that wasn't because of that i did that he could have taken responsibility for a lot of that at any time as well yeah certainly when with the alvarez stuff like that was out of nowhere yeah you that know, was like, a little yeah i mean and uh, so um, and you know, and I'm friends with Brian, but still like, it's not about that. It's yeah. It's, and and, it Brian, been and Brian, Brian's correct too. And that Brian did this very even handedly. I'm friends. With he Brian did. As well. He did. But, yeah. but punk was looking at an edited copy of what he said. 